anterior cruciate ligament is a structure more commonly known in the lay press as the ACL. It is a structure similar to a rope within the knee that is about as big in diameter as a person's ring finger. It runs from a posterior portion of the knee, moving forward in the knee and then attaching to the shin bone at its top surface in the anterior or forward port of the knee. This structure prevents abnormal rotation and shifting of the shin bone or tibia related to the femur and if absent makes cutting sports and similar activities very difficult. There are numerous ways for the ACL to rupture. When speaking of ski injuries in particular, alpine skiers who get in the back seat and abnormally or excessively put weight on the downhill ski while in a posterior position are particularly at risk. Other prime examples of classic ACL injuries are a fixed foot, for instance, a cleat in soft grassy turf and a blow delivered to the outside of the knee when the foot is unable to release itself from the turf. These two classic patterns of ACL injury are seen again and again and while there are literally thousands of possibilities for how someone could suffer an ACL rupture, these two or a variant of these two types are quite common. If a person hears a pop and has immediate swelling of the knee after an injury to the knee, there is about a 95% chance of incidence of ACL rupture in that case. For an injury that persists in the days and weeks afterward without treatment, Typically speaking, it would heal in a loose or unstable fashion and would be particularly unstable during times of lateral movement or change in direction. People in whom an ACL is ruptured can find running on a treadmill to be quite tolerable after the injury, but they would be less likely to be happy with playing soccer or basketball, racquetball or tennis, or any of the sports or activities in which quick changes of direction would be important. Typically, discussing the history of the problem with the patient is very indicative and helpful in diagnosing the problem. Physical examination is also extremely accurate at identifying a knee in which the ACL is compromised. MRI is a test which helps to understand not only the degree of tear, but other injuries associated in the knee in addition to the ACL rupture. Any combination of these tools can be used to accurately identify an ACL disruption. Generally, ACL tears are not diagnostic challenges. It is possible to manage an ACL disruption non-surgically and still have a happy life for those who spend a majority of time swimming, walking, hiking on relatively stable surfaces. One can certainly maintain good aerobic capacity and good fitness while avoiding the cutting sports and for some this is a reasonable and perhaps smart choice. In those who prefer to retain the ability to manage any and all surfaces and also to maintain the ability to participate in activities where quick changes of direction are critical will find ACL reconstruction to be more suitable. ACL reconstruction is a procedure in which the fibers of the torn ligament are removed and replaced with new material which mimics the original ACL. There are different sources of the material including the patient's own patellar tendon or the patient's own hamstring tendons which are borrowed from the knee and reintroduced as the ACL graft. There are actually other more unusual but certainly plausible options for grafts when borrowed from the patient's knee, but the most common are the patellar tendon or the hamstring. Additional options include tissue from the tissue bank, in other words, tissue from other people, and this is tech a technique that is generally reserved for failed grafts, but certainly can be used as a primary graft choice and is more commonly used in revision ACL work as well as repair of other ligaments within the knee when multiple ligaments are torn at the same time of injury. Immediate weight bearing is possible and this is generally done in a brace to protect the knee from unintended falls related to weakness in the post-operative phase. Physical therapy begins immediately working on range of motion and leg strength. Generally speaking, most people spend time with the physical therapist for about six months, working frequently with the therapist in the beginning and then reducing the number of visits over the course of time. As always, ice, elevation, and pain control are critical in the initial phases of the post-operative course, and if one is careful about following those rules, generally it is a very tolerable post-operative regimen. Physical therapy follows the surgery within a few days and is generally directed at reducing swelling, working on range of motion in the early phase. Once the early post-surgical phase is complete, a comprehensive strengthening program ensues, followed by and potentially at the same time as a program directed at regaining balance and regaining proprioception. The torn ACL is an extremely common affliction which has occurred thousands of times and has undergone reconstruction thousands of times as well. 
The science behind recovery from the injury is excellent, and the physical therapy is extremely specific and focused on returning to a normal lifestyle after ACL reconstruction. For more information on ACL reconstruction, please refer to our website at afoc.com.